we're here at super chain space and this time we have some sneak preview we're here with david the founder of super Seed, a new layer two that when you watch this has joined the super chain david tell me a little bit about yourself and what is super Seed, because i think it's quite nascent in, in its infancy right now yeah yeah so a little bit about myself i joined crypto quite early back in 2014 but back then mostly as an outsider i like bought a fraction of a btc held it for i guess two three years and uh, yeah bought some altcoins but never really paid attention back then and afterwards in 2017 um i discovered ethereum and started getting serious about the space uh had a actually good time uh, when it came to investing in icos and all the projects that were launching back then by the end of the year i actually quit my job and like ever since i'm in crypto so pause one the, the, i like i love this conversation where people are like hey i quit my job because my investments went really well yeah, yeah. Did it, it, it worked out now, but that probably came from hard, from hard work. But at that time, did you have to suffer? Did it work out? Did it? It, it did not work out. I, I quit my job like in November, 2017. The top. Like, uh, and then basically in January, it was the top. And ever since it went down <laughs> for, for, for quite a while, but it, it, it did work out. Uh, in the end you sitting here with me and uh yeah yeah and yeah and about super seed so uh last year i i started uh, arcantum labs which is the company developing super seed and uh, yeah this year is when we hired the team and started to actively work on 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 the project itself and yeah uh, we're, we're here today uh, our testnet is live and uh, we're really excited about our upcoming mainnet launch which what is, is uh, what is super sheets core focus yeah so our core focus isn't necessarily scalability uh, we have a core application which is a cdp lending platform and the idea with our project is that uh, crypto today has uh, figured out the problem of uh, generating revenue right there are multiple protocols that are generating revenue but we believe that so far, at least, it's, uh, it's, it's a problem when it comes to value accrual for token holders. So we have all those protocols that generate fees, but uh, there's not a clear way uh, for, for, for people who hold tokens from those protocols to benefit from that. I, I that that's, that. that's an issue. And uh, with our CDP lending platform, what we are trying to do is to change what a token actually is. And what we call uh, our, our future token is a super collateral. So in the lending platform, you'll be able to use the super seed token as collateral, but because it has certain properties, we call it a super collateral. So what it allows you to do is, is to borrow a stable coin against against the super seed token and the fees that we generate across our project uh, and we have multiple streams of fees go towards repaying the loans of super collateral borrowers so uh, to to go a bit into detail l2s generate sequencer revenue yeah, and yeah. these days we have some some maybe some experimentation when it comes to that but Mostly, it just goes into a foundation, a DAO or something. I think I, I can speak not for everyone, but I know a lot of sequencer fees just go into the foundation with the Optimism Collective, you know. Mm -hmm. As a super chain, you are pretty much guaranteed to donate either 15% of revenue yeah. or the greater of 2.5% of profit. So while a fee does go to foundation, with Optimism Collective, we do get some, but you are right that most of the fees just... Uh... In general, I mean, in yeah. general, with L2s, it's it's not necessarily a benefit to token holders. It's unclear what is yeah. happening with those fees. And we we plan to use the net sequencer fee. So, of course, being part of the super chain does mean that part uh, of the net sequencer fees 
will flow to, to optimism, but the rest uh, we can decide how we want to uh, use them. And with us, we want to programmatically use them to repay loans of super collateral borrowers. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's one of one of the sources of fees that we use for this specific purpose. But of course, we have uh, other sources of fees that are not necessarily correlated with sequence or revenue. So another source of fees that we use for the same exact purpose uh, has to do with revenue from interest that's paid by um, borrowers who use a different type of collateral. So let's say you, you come to SuperSeed and you have ETH and you want to borrow uh, using our protocol. Uh, for that, you will have to pay some interest, just like you would with uh, MakerDAO, right? And that's that's revenue. Now, uh, what Maker does with that, with those fees, is they do buybacks and burn, uh, which we believe is uh, hugely capital inefficient to to do that uh, with with fees. We believe that if we give our token holders the ability to take out a loan and uh, not have to pay it back because the, f the the fees that are generated go towards repaying that loan, that's a much more capital efficient way of redistributing those fees. You get basically potentially years worth of yield upfront. Uh, you have to maintain the position, of course, in the CDP, but as fees get generated, your debt disappears. So even say that burn debt, not capital, mm -hmm. right? As 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 a way to uh, to explain the value proposition, and we have other sources of fees. Uh, one of them is something that we came up with and we call it proof of repayment. So what's proof of repayment? Uh, it's inspired by proof of work and proof of stake, which is protocols like Bitcoin or Ethereum uh, have figured out ways to programmatically distribute rewards uh, to participants who perform actions that are beneficial to to their protocol. And for example, with Bitcoin, what's super critical is for the chain to be secure. So uh, what proof of work does is uh, it rewards those who secure the Bitcoin blockchain. There's like a block reward. And if you secure the chain by, by mining, you're 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 getting rewarded. Mm -hmm. The same thing is uh, with with Ethereum proof of stake. Of course, people stake because they want a reward. But in order to get a reward, what uh, what they are doing is securing the chain. Now, what L2s have here uh, is uh, they they have a an advantage versus L1s because L2s do not have to provide their own security. So as an L2, you don't have to mint new tokens to pay for uh, security. No. You inherit security from Ethereum. So this gives you, an, as an L2, this gives you optionality. You now can have a programmatic way of distributing rewards, but you can use it for something else, something else that you might care about as a protocol, right? And with SuperSeed, what we care about is repaying the loans of super collateral borrowers. Mm -hmm. So in this sense, uh, what proof of repayment is, is exactly that, a way to, to distribute rewards to people who want to repay uh, uh, the loans of super collateral borrowers. And we, we will have, uh, just like Optimism, Arbitrum and other L2s, 2% inflation per year, mm -hmm. but it gets distributed in in a programmatic way via daily auctions. Okay. And anyone can come, uh, be a repayer, and decide to commit a certain amount of stable coins for repaying the loans of super collateral borrowers. I, I find so interesting is that you guys are so core focused on your CDP lending. Yes. And that is like the, you guys have really thought out of a way to build a chain just around that and basically bring people value for their tokens. But yes. what I want to dive into is the super collateral, right? Mm -hmm. Is this a specific token standard? We we would like to, to make it a specific token standard just because we believe uh, that just like there was an evolution from um, utility tokens mm -hmm. 
to governance tokens that that was an upgrade because back in the day back in 2017 when when i mentioned uh, the ico eras yeah everybody was uh designing their their token to be a utility token and that was to, supposed to be currency in the protocol and we know that failed nobody's building their protocol with a utility token anymore it's mostly a governance token which gives you additional benefits like uh like the top ones the best governance tokens there are in crypto right now will allow you to vote on changes on uh maybe treasury uh, and potentially Fully. you also get get to benefit from fees for example with maker they do to take those fees and uh, it's a form of redistribution by doing buybacks and burn we we don't believe it's the most capital efficient one it but a it's form. a form of yeah, yeah. distributing those funds back to token holders and uh, i think the next iteration of that is super collateral uh, by that, we mean a collateral that gives you two things that we as crypto people want, right? Uh, as crypto people, we would like to be long the crypto market, right? We want to be invested. At the same time, we also want to sell, right? We want to capture We want to capture some of the value. We don't just want to see that uh, number whatever up. number go up. We, we want to benefit from that. And if you can hold take out a loan uh, that's zero interest under certain conditions and that loan gets repaid over time through for fees. you through fees you you kind of get the benefit of both because you have you can stay long you can benefit from liquidity but that loan that you take you don't have to repay because like the network itself works in such a way where every fee goes towards repaying your loan so i like it I think it's yeah. very innovative. It's again something we haven't seen, but I also think it has like cool consumer DeFi mm -hmm. side of things. Now, what I want to jump to is uh, the OP chains are now about eighteen, right? Superseed is very new right now. It's yes. unofficial at this point in time. But then when we release this, you guys will probably have something out. Who do you, David, want to work with? Pick an OP chain. Any OP chain besides OP Mainnet. Who would you like to work with on a campaign, be it them incorporating super collateral as a token standard? Who, who, who would you like to see working with? Uh, we're, we're open to when it comes to working with other chains, we're, we're pretty much open to, to all of them. Uh, we want to cooperate with all of them. We do see the potential of uh, eventually deploying the CDP lending platform on other chains as well and also maybe working with those teams to integrate their own tokens in our uh, lending platform as collateral. Uh, of course, there, there are some safety requirements for that to be uh, working, but yeah, for sure, we would, would be happy to work with. I, the way I see it is like, I can see this uh, super collateral token standard as really something that you guys have brought to the super chain, because yeah. I think when it comes to innovations right now in the super chain, there's a uh, consumer apps that are coming out. People are bringing account abstraction. People are trying to bring ZK proofs, but we haven't really seen like a DeFi innovation. So I think this super collateral, maybe as a token standard for other people to integrate is great. Now let's jump a little bit into the future, right? It's now two and a half years into the future. It's 2027. We are super seed is on the uh, this official OP chain. You guys are contributing to the sequencer fees. Your model works. Valley token holders are happy. What's next? What, what do you see happening next? Okay. Well, we do see a version where our CDP lending platform can potentially uh, accept even collateral that's not super safe because of repayment bolts. So uh, well, part of our design has something that we call repayment vaults. And repayment vaults uh, are like a stable uh, sync. What do I mean by that? Uh, repayment doesn't happen the instant, the, 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 the exact moment when we capture the fees. Rather, the fees get placed first into a repayment vault and then gradually 
they flow towards repaying loans for super collateral borrowers. Mm -hmm. Now, what that means is that in theory, at least, and that's re it remains to be seen if we want to go that route or, or not, but we could add other types of um, like smaller tokens that can be used as collateral as long as uh, the fees that they placed into their own um, repay, um, repayment vault. Uh, so what's in the repayment vault is uh, valued at mo more than the debt that they uh, generated using their token as collateral. It's like an insurance fund. So even th it cannot generate bad debt in, in that uh, scenario. Mm -hmm. So if we cap it so that you can only issue less debt uh, then uh, what's in the repayment vault, we could potentially allow other types of collateral and smaller tokens to be used and actually generate a really uh, scalable uh, stablecoin this way, right? Because that's that's the main issue with, um, uh, with CDP lending platforms. Uh, at a certain point, it's it gets harder and harder to scale because you you have to be over collateralized mm -hmm. but adding new forms of collateral can allow you to scale indefinitely david thank you so much for coming on i hope in the next couple of years we get to see this whole platform laid out what we have here is the official super chain jersey here super seed is about to hopefully join the super chain i'd like to unofficially officially hand you the jersey for the Super Chain. Okay, thank you very much. This is for you. Thank you wow. so much for coming here. That's great. Hopefully next version, we have Super Seed on it. Yeah, awesome. definitely. Thank, thank you so much for having me.